Today we are talking about post-processing using the new scriptable vendor pipeline from Unity 2018. It's currently in beta, so uh, don't use it in productive projects or something like that. Um, you might notice that um, there are many uh, tutorials out there on the post-processing stack. Um, if you're using this already, you should uninstall it, get rid of everything, uh, save the values that you have in your profiles. And the other thing you should do is that you have to upgrade your project to the scriptable render pipeline. Um, there's an info box on the upper right corner right now. So there's a link to the video. It shows you everything you need to do to use the new scriptable render pipeline. And you should have a look at the package manager. So you should have the lightwrite or the HD renderer installed. Please do not install the post processing because it's already included in there. So let's start by creating a post processing profile. And this is different than the current one. So the logo is the same, but as you can see in the inspector, it looks completely different. So we have to do something uh, on our camera, for example here. Um, you have to create a new layer, I call the post process, I can show you the process, you just go to add layer, say post process test or something like that, and then you have a new layer. It's um, important to use this because otherwise it won't work. So you have to add a component, the post processing layer, and here you have to choose a layer, uh, otherwise you get a warning, you can't choose nothing or everything, you just choose the same layer as you have here in your camera and that's all you need. And you need a new empty game object, you can call this uh, post processing and you have to add the post, -process -post, -process post process volume here and just drag and drop your profile to this profile. That's everything you need to do. I think, uh, no, wait, we have to change the layer to post processing test. So I find it very confusing. Um, it took me a while to figure it out, but uh, make sure have the white layer here, have a positive depth here, have the post processing layer script attached here, a second game object, same layer, just the volume and we can drop the profile. And that's it. So you can um, override your profile here with effects or just add effects in your profile itself. Let's start by adding some effects. So we go to effects, unity and maybe a color grading. Um, we set the lift to a little bit of red. And you see you have to mark everything you want to change. For example, if you want to change the temperature, you mark it. So, um, so then you can override it. So, and here you see, um, it's using the default one and as soon as you check it, it's getting a little bit more red. So, uh, one thing you will notice and the first problem is nothing changed. And this is because of the setting is global or not because how it works is this is a post processing and you have to add a collider um, so that you say or can say, okay, I want this color grading only in this box. You see as soon as uh, the camera is in the box, the post processing is applied. So then you can have different moods in different stages of your level as soon as you traverse through your level. Um, if you don't want to have that, and I think in the simplest case you don't want to have that, you just um, use it's global and then it's applied. So, and here's our color grading. Uh, the scene looks very red. I will just reduce it a little bit. Maybe this is a good color. Uh, we add a different effect, like a bloom effect. And um, set the intensity higher threshold lower maybe 0.5 and 0.1 I think this is good maybe a third one this is a depth of field so you basically set the distance um, 
how far you want to look without having a blurry effect. So if you want to look five um, or maybe four units, you see uh, it starts blurring right here at the stairs. And um, here you can say how blurry it is. So if you raise it really high, the distance goes a little bit lower as well. Um, and here's the aperture. I think this is the distance, right? Yeah. So the aperture is the distance and the rest is the strength. Okay. Um, in general, I, I wouldn't use a depth of field in any gameplay. Uh, just use it when you have some uh, cinematic situations in your game um, because uh, it's hard to play when everything is blurry. So that's it. We have a post processing. Uh, I will turn this off. Looks a little bit better. So that's everything you need to use the new post processing framework with the scriptable render pipeline. And in the next video, I will show you how you can create your own shaders.